I am still reliving the first Starship launch and I can't wait until the next one. In this episode, I have some cool goodies that I wanna share with you from the Starship launch and also talk to someone who I think you'll really enjoy this interview. I was scrolling on Twitter and I saw this photo and it stopped me in my tracks. We know that journalists will go many lengths to get the shot or the story. In fact, I traveled down to Boca Chica on crutches because I was determined to cover the launch for you guys and I reached out to the man who took this photo, Eric Kuna, because I knew that this shot was not by any accident. And he was able to find the family in this photo by using Twitter. So I wanted to share this interview with you. I hope that you enjoy it. The shuttle is through the tower. Tranquility base here. The eagle has landed. Ah, uh, doing photography since the turn of the century. <laughs> Eric has been practicing his skill for over 20 years. He started out doing more video work, like for weddings and special events, but it didn't really stroke his passion. Then he started exploring night photography. So I was doing a lot of different things. Didn't really like love one thing. You know, I was doing night photography, doing a lot of aviation, doing a lot of sports photography. And then it was in 2015, I saw the SpaceX booster land. And when I saw the SpaceX booster land, I was like, I gotta give you, I, I gotta be part of this. I gotta use the skill that I have in the visual storytelling to tell the story of this. So then I just became consumed with telling the story of space. Eric is based in Tampa, Florida, just a few hours from the Cape, but this launch that we're talking about happened in South Texas in Boca Chica, and I reached out to him wanting to know how he captured this photo. While Joe Tagmeyer and I were staking out on the island, awaiting a launch license and then an official launch date, Eric was in Florida, waiting for SpaceX to send a notice to the media about setting up remote cameras. Now he got word Friday about the initial Starship attempt launch for Monday, April 17th. So he loaded up the RV and headed for South Padre Island. Went out, set up the cameras, did all, did all the camera setup around the pad where we'll go out and we'll set up our cameras to like remote trigger based on sound or whatever we want them to trigger on. But usually it's sound uh, because that's the thing you can always guarantee a rocket will make a bunch of sound when it lifts off. So uh, we set up our cameras, did all that. And then, yeah, Monday it ended up scrubbing. So got to go pick up our cameras from the pad. Uh, we had to remove them, take them back and then wait for the next opportunity. And then come Wednesday, we set up all our cameras again, got everything ready again. And then Thursday, you know, we all know the rest is history. So. Monday Scrub actually allowed us all to have a dress rehearsal for the big event. And I was kind of glad that it scrubbed because I ended up changing my entire strategy. I had a better location with better service and the chance to interview Elon Musk's family. For Eric and all the photographers, they set up their remote cameras for Monday's attempt, then they had to retrieve them, and then they had to set them up again for the Thursday 420 launch. Of course, this is a song and dance not unfamiliar to a rock photographer. Now we know many of those cameras did not survive the launch. Eric estimates about 40 were lost. In fact, he still hasn't received his camera back from SpaceX. I have two cameras that were set up inside the pad. So they were like inside very close to the pad, uh, maybe about 700 yards away from the rocket. So very close. Um, and they were actually mounted to a metal railing that was then anchored to the concrete, you know, in a multiple places. So this is a, a secure metal railing. And um, after the launch, that railing no longer existed in that spot. So that railing had been literally blown off its cankers and ripped out. And all of our all of our cameras are set up anchored to this. So um, we don't know yet. I mean, I've been told by SpaceX that they found my equipment. I don't know what's. I don't know what condition it's in and it's being sent back to me right now so oh my gosh, it'll no be way. interesting i've seen i've seen others that were near me their equipment and i'm not expecting for anything more than just a ripped up crumbled up mess but but I think it's really cool. I'll probably use it as like a trophy or something. But he fully accepts the risk of placing remote cameras and he set up cameras that were already used and not his best gear on purpose. Did you know that it was likely going to be destroyed? 
Yeah, yeah, we knew. And we we assume the risk. I mean, you know, SpaceX is very clear with us, you know, and always any company when you're setting up this stuff is very clear with you. Like, hey, it's it's on you. It's your risk, you know, if we do this. But, you know, it was one of those things where I was willing to make that sacrifice to tell the story. I understand we took the risk. And that's where, you know, we always have the people on the Internet that then go like, Hey, but if we don't take that risk and we don't do that stuff, we're never going to be able to tell the story for you guys because we don't take risks. How are we going to do anything? And space program is a great example of taking risk. Like, right. that's why I think SpaceX has gone at the pace they have. They are doing what we used to do back in the 50s and 60s. They're taking the risks and going, hey, we're going to maybe do something totally different. It might fail. But we'll learn from it. And then, you know, and then that's what they do is they get to that point. Same thing with us. We have to take risks and we have to do this stuff to tell the story. Like, it's very hard, uh, you know, when it's very nerve wracking when I saw that plume going off and going, those cameras are toast. Recently, I was shooting uh, Stoke Space had their test, um, mm -hmm. um, their test launches for their second stage. And one of the cameras I had put out there had been melted and burned by that that hot fire test however it still functioned just fine but those are the type of cameras we put out there is cameras that we're not afraid to lose but he says the majority of the time cameras are actually lost to weather related events especially you know in florida we get the thunderstorms that roll through it can be like as high as a tropical storm at times you know that'll come through so it's usually rain it's usually wind it's weather you know that damages them in this case, it was just the world's most powerful rocket. <laughs> Eric's full-time job is actually teaching photography. And so I wanted to ask him after all of these years of shooting, was there anything unique that he took away from this Starship experience? Everybody's going to Monday morning quarterback like, hey, maybe you shouldn't have put your cameras in that close, or maybe you should put them in a box or, or this metal container. And like a lot of times the, the protection that it would take to protect against a rocket would cost way more than the cameras that are that are being put out there so we kind of just have to like make those sacrifices and and what it is but really at the end of the day um with me i'm less concerned a lot of times about those shots i really like uh telling a story through uh linking uh humanity to it and that's that's honestly why you know i i went after the shot i did uh, right. that ended up being like the shot that a lot of people were sharing because right. you know where the this spacex has spacex has set up like a nice facility a nice location where we could go the press could go and shoot the launch and it's like um you know it's a, a picture of a rocket lifting off the pad like that's I mean, hundred, you know, there's hundred people that are going to get that shot. Rocket launches truly are a unifying experience. And that is exactly what Eric was able to capture in this photo. Nobody talks politics, religion, all these things that divide us so much that at the end of the day, if we really talk to each other, we really have, we have a lot in common. And at launches, it feels like we're all just one community, one, 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 we're not divided. But Eric was looking for a particular group to capture, one that he thought would react accordingly, which is why he set up his shot about a football field away from the family in this photo. But there were no guarantees that the child was gonna pop up and start raising his arms and cheering victory. What I was scoping out for and what I was looking for um, is, I, I, as a photographer, I kind of have to profile and say, okay, who's going to react to this? Who's going to give that raw emotion? And what I've noticed over the years of my covering these launches is us as adults, we've become consumed with watching launches through our phones. We have, uh, we take out our phones, we push the record button, we take out the phones, we take pictures. And that's such a it's 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 not as it's not raw it's not that that raw emotion where um you know when i saw the this these two kids dragging their dad along i went these two kids are excited to be here they want to be here and they're not going to take out their phone and just take a picture of the launch and um you know they sat down uh, on a dune in front of me and uh, i was about a football field away from them 
So that way I could zoom in and get them in proportion. Oh, yeah. Cause that's one of the techniques that we do as photographers. We want to, you know, bring those things together. So the frame is more balanced. Yeah. And by being that far away, I could bring the, the child and the rocket to be more in balance or more in balance with the frame. If I was up close to them, he would, the rocket would be very small and he would be really big. So it's trying to get that balance or what we call compression with the lens. Um, and so I was back a while. I'm laying on the ground on a dune to get at his level, to get below his level so I could shoot up towards him. I must have looked like the silliest person on the beach because everybody else is standing up. I'm laying down. And um, so I just, I went all in on maybe this this kid will react. They're all sitting down in a row. Her, uh, you know, his their dad actually had them sit because there was other photographers around and he wanted the kids to sit down to not get in anybody's shot. And uh, then what ended up happening was right as that launch, you know, they saw it. And the minute the, the minute he saw, the minute the kids saw the rocket pop out of that plume, he just popped up. And it was like this raw emotion of just like so excited to see what was going on. And uh, that was the photo. And that ended up being the photo. So. It's it's such a good photo. And, and I love Thank that. You. It is like raw emotion and you make a good point. I mean, so many people are just on their phones or, you know, mm -hmm. like we're not taking in the real experience. And um, so tell me more about you were able to contact the family. Yeah. So so one of the what I would have loved to do is be able to get up to them after the launch and get their contact information and send them a print because I knew when I shot it, like this is going to be a, I, you could just see it in the viewfinder where you're like, that's the moment. That's it. Um, and I, by the time though, I got packed up, got my gear and got to try to get up to them. They were lost in the crowd because I was so far from them. So I said, well, you know what? I, I would really, you know, if I was that kid, I'd love this photo. Um, I, I would want, you know, if I was that family, if that was my family, I'd want that photo. If that was my daughter, I'd want that photo. So I was like, you know what? I wonder if I just go on online and just post like maybe somebody will know somebody that knows somebody that then would be able to contact this family. And within it was within 12 hours of posting that that we had found and you know, the family had contacted me directly. I contacted them directly back to them. And then by the next day, I had sent the brand out to them. So it was just amazing how that quickly it was able to go from. I didn't know who this family was to now being in contact with them. So, and you posted on Twitter, Twitter. Yeah. Yay. Um, Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. what happened? How did they, how did they, you know, uh, connect the dots? Uh, you know what? It was just, I, the, the, the father of the kids was scrolling around, saw the picture and kind of did a double take, like, wait a minute. And then started reading the story and then they contacted me directly through, you know, uh, direct messaging. So, and where are they based out of? So they're from Arkansas. So they drove down and uh, they drove down from the, for the launch specifically, uh, you know, the family and the kids are just into that, you know, love, love space, love rockets. And, you know, just wanted to be part of that. So they drove down, you know, the hours it took to drive down from Arkansas to South Padre Island to watch this launch, which, I just think it's awesome. Uh, that's another thing is getting kids excited about this, getting kids involved. Um, you know, I've always been big on that. So. Oh, I mean, they're, they're the ones that we want to inspire the most. They're the ones who yeah. might go to Mars. <laughs> yep. Well, they, yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, and so what was the family's reaction? Were they just like, oh, this is so awesome. Oh yeah. They, they loved it. They were all about it. Um, uh, they love the print. They're actually, I have the print now. They're getting it uh, mounted. Uh, so then uh, we'll be able to see afterwards uh, once it's mounted. But they love it. You know, I'm very excited to get it. And um, it'll definitely be something that I know they'll treasure. But it's just something that I know I'll treasure as well, just because it, it's such a, like I said, it's one of those photos where you, we as photographers, we try to tell the story in one frame and one single moment frozen in time. 
And that is a moment frozen in time that that really it almost has like a, a lot of people say like a Norman Rockwell s kind of look to it where it's 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 kind of retro but yet modern, um, and that just has to do with just I think how it's framed and how it you know the 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 also the conditions that day because it was ultra hazy and it was just a a different type of environment. It kind of had lent itself to being a little bit more like kind of looked like more of a nostalgic photo. Mm -hmm. No, I feel like, I mean, obviously that was the first launch. And so it's going to be just more and more significant as time goes on, yeah. right? Eric and I both agree. Part of our mission is inspiring and educating the public about what exactly is going on in our space industry. Of course, there is so much going on. In fact, too much to keep up with. And this is just the beginning. I cover uh, for an agency out of New York City, Supercluster. And that's our that's our big thing is we just want to, uh, you know, tell the story of space for everybody, you know, and and connecting everybody with it. Not just the people that you know, are into this, but those, you know, cause there is, it is a great thing that I think, like you just said, a lot of people don't know um, exactly everything that we're doing and even, even don't know, like, for example, Starship is one of the things that will get us to the moon. I mean, NASA has put basically their faith in SpaceX to say, you're going to be the lunar lander. You are going to be the people like ferrying people, you know, so we want this to succeed. Like this is in all of our best interest for this to succeed. And that's the other thing that people don't realize is it was successful. I mean, they really wanted it to just, it needed to clear the pad. They need, and they, that's the way SpaceX, you know, builds is they, they design, they iterate, they test, and then they iterate some more and then they keep on going. And as you can see, that that has been very successful. Like, for example, they did the same thing with Commercial Crew. And look where Commercial Crew is. I mean, now we can't even imagine a world uh, where we're not sending up astronauts to the space station on a, on a Crew Dragon. And we can't even imagine a world where rockets aren't landing. I mean, just the other day, we had a Falcon Heavy that had expendable boosters. And that was the number one question I kept on getting is like, why are we throwing away the boosters? Why? Why are these things expendable? You know, everybody's just expecting the boosters to come back and be refurbished where, you know, where if you look around at the industry, there's really nobody else doing that yet. I um, mean, yeah. they're starting to, you know, it's starting to catch on. But that's what's crazy is how and think about that in less than 10 years, that became like the standard. Like, why are you throwing away a booster? Why are you just like, it, and it's so weird to think 10 years ago, it was like, you'll never land a booster. That was more of the thing. And now it's like, why are we throwing away? And that's where, to me, it's always like, don't count anything out. Like, we mm -hmm. can do anything. You know, when oh, we yeah. work together and we do stuff, I mean, we can do awesome things. But when we are divided and we're fighting with each other and we're doing all that, you can see what happens. It's no good. Yeah. But. It's good to get comfortable being uncomfortable and taking risks. Fortune favors the bold, just like I went all in on the Ellie and Space Channel, and just like Eric laid in the dunes, hoping that the launch would trigger a reaction from this family. Luckily, he trusted his gut, his shot worked out, and now we have a photo that could inspire the world. Most people would have stood up and been comfortable, and I'm laying down in the sand and the, and the muck to, yeah. to get the shot because I was like, I need, this is going to be something, if it works, this is going to be something that will inspire people. Yeah. And that's what we want to do. We don't want to just take the safe route and just right. take the conservative route. Like, like take the risks, do the, take that leap and yeah. then be part of that journey. You know, we're all on this journey together. Like, let's be part of it. Well, I've gone all in on a lot of things recently. And so I love how you just like committed to the shot and it worked out. But like there was probably a little part of you like, you know, this might not work out or it might oh, not. Absolutely. I mean, there was right before that shot, like they're all sitting down and I'm like, it'll look cool, but it'd be much cooler if I had that reaction. And then and then you, you actually if you look, I have frames like so, you know, the child popped up his father went up to stand but he went a lot slower you know so there's frames where i've got i've got his father standing up that really don't look as good because it, you know the father looks like he's confused and he's not 
in the right pose and the child is just going crazy and he's just and and i, I have a video on it as well on twitter uh, where oh. i would i had another camera that i had set up because we always try to hedge our bets i was like well if this doesn't work i've got another camera set up with another mound that it was shooting at with another group of people which mm -hmm. again i had profiled and said well maybe somebody will react there not a single person reacted to the launch they were all taking pictures they were all in the moment and that's where like i would my biggest advice to people that go to the launch is experience the launch there are professional photographers and videographers and webcasts and all this stuff that are capturing this be present at the launch because that's our job like that's what we do and we're really good at that but like, I'm telling you, you will love the launch way more if you're just present at it and you're enjoying it. Yeah. And being present in that moment is very important in life, you know? And that's where I, that would be my thing for people watching a launch is make sure you are focused in and present at the launch because it, it is a very transformative experience. Even if you can come to, you know, Cape Canaveral and watch a launch. Uh, you know, I love night launches. I'm a night photographer. And, but those are the, I, what I consider some of the most like impactful because mm -hmm. it going from night to like almost daylight yeah. and feeling and you just you feel that raw power and you're just like, wow, we did that. We created that. And that's that's one of the things that, you know, like to speak to the unifying uh, thing. I had a friend who from the UK. Right. And we always go back and forth. It, you know, England's better for this. America's better for this, blah, blah, blah. And we'll, 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 we'll jab at each other. We'll jab at each other. And he was over here. He was actually teaching a class for us. And I told him, Hey, there's a, there's a rocket launch tonight and it's landing back on land. It's like, you have to go, you have to go, you have to experience this. And he's like, Oh, I got to wake up early for a flight. And I'm like, no, just go do it. And he calls me the next morning and he goes, I just can't believe that was the most awesome thing. I can't believe we did that. And he said, we did that. And that's where I stopped him. And I said, do you see what that, do you see what you just said? That's what I love about space is that no longer were, was he British? No longer was I American. It was just humanity did something really awesome mm -hmm. and we should celebrate that. And that's where, you know, that is the unifying part about space exploration that I love. If you want to support Eric's work, consider buying a print from his website, which is erickuna.com. I've also linked his website in the description. The best way for directly for me is, you know, uh, buy a print, buy a print. And, and I'll, that proceeds go to basically telling the story in the future. That's how we do this stuff. Because it is one of those things where it, there isn't a lot of monetary support for this stuff. Through people, we're able to get that support. And, uh, you know, so supporting Supercluster as well. Uh, download the app that we have stuff on the store. Anything you can do to support us helps us tell these stories. There's a little bit of that, the child in all of us. The child in that photo is in all of us. I think our lives would be a lot better if we tapped into that um, raw emotion that um, was seen in that photo. So I really hope that you enjoyed that interview. I thought that Eric had some great perspective on why this is such an exciting time and how rocket launches and just going to space in general is something that we could all have a little more of in our lives. Now I did want to share with you some cool show and tell things that I got from the launch and I've been waiting to make this video so that I could share them with you. So first, uh, you're probably wondering what is inside of this. Well, before I show you, I want to tell you that I received this in the mail from a couple that I met down on my trip to Boca Chica, and they wanted to send me a memento from Starbase. So, okay, so they sent me a piece of the Fondag concrete that blew up and blew away from the pad during the Starship launch. So I'm really excited to add this to the collection. Let's take a look at it. Yes, this is the Fondag, the supposedly super strong concrete that, you know, we all know what happened. Um, so I'm really excited to have this and this can now sit alongside this. This is a little chip from one of those heat tiles happy to report that I found this one myself on the beach. Of course, Joe Tagmeyer got the big uh, victory when he found half of an entire heat shield tile. 
But I'm happy with these because these are memories of just one of the best experiences of my life and they will be on my bookcase. Now there were two other things that I wanted to show you and I would have shown you these sooner but I actually left them in Angry Astronaut's Tesla that he rented for covering the Starship launch. Um, so he finally got those to me in the mail. Thank you for sending them back to me. I would have been tempted to keep them myself, but I had one of my very great viewers give me this Starship patch. Of course, you see the four leaf clover. And I mean, I love having this in my collection. I really think that it is a great patch. And also there was a, an after party, I was not there, but um, there was one of these uh, cool lays that came from it, which says SpaceX, yes. So I'm just so grateful for everyone who has pitched in to support the channel. And I have so many amazing subscribers. Like it blows my mind every single day to think about how many people support Ellie in space. And also recently I made a 420 commemorative t-shirt design. You guys, it is my best selling product. We did a limited run and I made a short about the orders going out soon, showing you the t-shirts being made. And so many of you have reached out to me wanting your own 420 commemorative Starship launch shirt. So we will be doing another run. I'll be sure to keep you posted on those details. But again, just thank you so much for supporting the channel. I, I sit here every day and I just think about, wow, in March, I broke my femur. I had a really hard month. There were some other personal things that happened. And, you know, covering Starship and just some of the events that have taken place since that really hard time have just been amazing. And I have so many, really, I consider them angels that have helped me make Ellie in space what it is and help me believe in myself and the channel. So I, I truly mean it when I say I'm sincerely so grateful that I get to do this as my job and I really appreciate all of your support. The other exciting thing that happened recently is Elon not only followed me and subscribed to me on Twitter, but so many of you are subscribing to me on Twitter and I really appreciate that support. I've set my subscription rate at $3 a month and so I'm putting some exclusive content on there, including an interview that I did with Drew Baglino that I put on my Twitter and my Patreon. So I'm really excited for what the future holds. I feel like this is just the beginning for Starship and this is really just the beginning for Ellie in Space. So thank you to everyone who is supporting the channel. You guys are great and uh, the, the future is very exciting. <laughs>